Another week, boys, and another twat. This week at Bungie, something unexpected happened on the way to the moon bunker. Many of you have been chasing a lot. Last week, you began your hunt with Anna, successfully defending Seraph Towers in the Windy Cove, Anchor of Light, and the Rupture, or Watch, as your fellow guardians carry the weight. Then you burned through a thousand enemies with your trusty shotgun. Sadly, your quest for answers came to a halt on Sunday evening, all thanks to a faulty door on the moon's bunker. Earlier this morning, Destiny Destiny 2 Hotfix 2.8.1.3 was released, unblocking your journey and finding truth behind the line. While we hate to see a bug ship, we're excited to right the ship as quickly as possible. Now we look to what comes next. Season of the Worthy is winding down, which means it's time for a round of previews from the team. This week, we're hyper-focused on legendary Ingrams and weapon tuning. So first up, decrypting the future. Last week, we did a deep dive on how loot will be evolving season over season with the upcoming addition of max power level to your gear. Players have been asking how how acquisition methods will be changing. We have a breakdown from the Destiny dev team on how we're keeping the items you earn from legendary ingrams and core activities relevant during a given season. So from the dev team, today we're gonna to be talking about some changes that are coming in season 11 to the way the Royal Loot Pool works. Because the Royal Pool serves as a baseline of legendary gear that can be earned across different activities, we wanna update and refresh it seasonally with meta relevant weapons, some of which are previously exclusive to specific activities like game Gambit or Crucible. This shared pool can also be unwieldy if you're looking for a specific role of a specific weapon. Pool too large can make it statistically challenging to find, much less with the role you want. Starting in Season 11, it will be curated both for relevance and overall size to strike a balance between the number of rewards and the chance to get a sought after drop. Every season, gear from previous seasons will be added and any gear that would no longer have a max power level greater than or equal to the current season season cap will be cycle out to ensure that drops are power relevant in the current season. The role pool for season 11 will consist of the following weapons. All right, so these are the weapons, guys. Oh man, some big ones, dude. Gnawing Hunger is going to be thrown into this. Nature of the Beast. Long Shadow. Okay. If you still need a weapon or a weapon roll from the current Vanguard Crucible Gamut playlist that isn't on that list, go grab it now. All right, so I guess a lot of loot's going to be cut down and overall the role pool is going to be increased. I still think these are a lot of weapons i mean to be honest with you i wish there was a more specific way to chase after specific roles or even specific weapons amongst the royal loot system that or maybe bungie just like caters the rng a little better to drop more god rolls of these weapons you know because these are a lot of weapons guys i mean the chance of you landing that perfectly god roll nature of the beast it's gonna be kind of slim, but we'll see. Now, moving on, lock and reload. Alongside the changes to the Royal Loot Pool, we have some changes coming to Destiny 2 Sandbox. Oh boy. This week, we'll be focusing on weapons, specifically perk tuning. Okay, here's a quick breakdown from the team on what to expect. Reload perk updates. We observed that players lean towards picking perks that increase their damage, for example, kill clip, or reduce weapon downtime, for example, outlaw. The damage perks were adjusted quite a while back, but reload perks still don't feel like choices. This tuning pass aims to keep them feeling powerful without being so dominant that no other choice seems viable. First, some information on stats that impact reload. Reload stat from 0 to 100 and maps onto an archetype specific reload animation speed. Reload duration scale. Most reload perks also apply a small multiplier to the reload animation so that if the reload stat is capped, you'll still see a small speed bump. Reload empty duration scale as above but only applies if the magazine is empty. Note that because most weapons have fairly high reload stats, decreasing a reload stat bonus from plus 100 to plus 50 will still max out the reload stat most of the time, so it doesn't slow down the actual reload as much as it seems. The following perks that alter these reload stats are being updated. Outlaw. Slow this down a little bit. Reload stat from plus 100 to plus 50. Reload duration scale from 0.8 to 0.9. Feeding Frenzy. This was strictly better than Outlaw, so we're changing functionality to be based on the number of rapid kills. Functionality change to increase reload speed based on the number of rapid kills up to five. With two kills, reload speed is equal to updated outlaw. With three plus kills, it's faster than outlaw. With four plus kills, it's the fastest reload speed in the game except alloy max. Max possible reload duration scale from 0.83 to 0.8. Max possible reload stat unchanged at plus 100. I don't know how I feel about these guys. I don't know. Rapid hit. Gave a huge amount of reload stability for very little work. Front load onto the first percent hit. We have updated it so that it still feels good, but isn't quite as powerful. Adjust the stacking bonus to give less benefit for the 
first hit and more with subsequent hits. Max possible reload stat from plus 100 to now plus 60. Max possible reload duration scale from 0.8 to 0.925. Max possible stability stat from plus 50 to plus 25. Holy hell, they're actually nerfing the stability. Wow. Drop max. Situationally, really powerful without a massive drawback. As good as a perk, but in a magazine column. Reload duration scale from 0.85 to 0.9 just brings it in line with Outlaw. Dude, some of these changes, man, just seem so unnecessary. Field prep, unchanged, but for reference, reload stat plus 50, reload duration scale 0.8. Alloy Mac, unchanged, but for reference, reload empty duration scale 0.666. Additionally, we're fixing an issue where perks that grant partial weapon ammo did not respect shot count for burst weapons. This means that these perks will now work correctly on pulse rifles, fusion rifles, and burst sidearms. So these perks will be more common on those weapon archetypes in the future. Slideways, slide shot, ambitious assassin, subsistence, overflow, lead from gold, clown cartridge. All right. I mean, I guess that's good. I like seeing more of these perks on these other weapon types, but this whole nerf here to reload speed, I don't know. It's just kind of surprising. I'm not saying that outlaw feeding frenzy and rapid hit weren't the more dominant reload perks. I just find it kind of surprising, right? Like, couldn't we just buff some of our other traits and perks, right? Bring them a little more in line, make them a little more lethal. I don't know. Before we pass judgment, let's just continue. General perk retuning. With opening up space by adjusting reload perks, we also retune some other underused perks based on our internal testing and perk popularity and effectiveness data from our internal analytics. So first up, dynamic sway reduction. Adds 10 stability over time in addition to accuracy. This is way more powerful than it sounds. Also reduce reticle movement from stability should now tell players this is working. Holy hell, fellas, that is insane. I've said it all along, guys. Dynamic Sway was one of the best perks, especially on things like auto rifles, as it's like the anti-bloom perk. Now that it's getting a stability bump on top of that, oh, fellas, it's gonna be the go-to perk for auto weapons. Pulse monitor, take critical damage, and you can quickly switch to your now fully loaded shotgun. Reload amount from 0.35 to one, plus 50 handling, 5% faster swap speed. This works on stowed weapons too, which is already the case, but makes it a lot more useful. Holy hell, guys, that's a big change. Okay, you got pulse monitor on your shotgun. You're taking damage. You're critically wounded. Bam, that plus 50 handling, depending on the handling speed of the shotgun already, might rival that of quick draw. On top of that 5% faster swap speed, it might automatically rival that of quick draw anyways. Hip fire grip now helps you hit shots closer to ADS ranges. Still doesn't affect damage drop off or magnetism. 1.2 times aim assist fall off, plus 15 aim assist, and plus 1.7 degrees precision hip fire angle threshold. By default, when hip firing a weapon, the center of your reticle must be over a target in order to get a crit. Otherwise, aim assist will give you a body shot. This change gives you a little leniency. So if the center of your reticle is not directly over a target, you will still get the crit if you're within this angle. Has no effect on snipers. Oh boy, I was about to say, man, if snipers could take advantage of this, this is going to be wild. And I've rocked a few hip fire snipers and you'll be amazed how well they actually land shots. But that's an interesting one. Might actually push people to use more hip fire. Sneak mode actually makes you sneaky now. Stealth buff now doesn't ping radar when shooting. Wait, what? So you just disappear off the radar when using sneak bow? Okay, I'm gonna have to see this. Incoming bow meta, new perks. Next season, we'll have new perks rolling exclusively on the season of redacted weapons. Additionally, Iron Banner will be receiving two new perks on two reprised weapons. In future seasons, these perks will begin to roll on other weapons. While we don't want to spoil the fun of discovering and testing new perks, we will leave you with the names of the upcoming Iron Banner perks, Iron Grip and Iron Gaze. We're excited to see the community break these perks down when the new season begins. Oh boy. Honestly, guys, I was kind of upset about the reload perks, but seeing the changes coming to those other perks, Dynamic Sway especially, I'm so excited, man. We are long overdue for many of our perks in the games to be updated. Now, upcoming archetype buffs. Next season, we're taking a quick pass on a few weapon archetypes that have been underperforming. First up, Slug Shotguns are underused in PvE because they require crits to maximize damage and didn't reward that precision with higher damage per second. Slug Shotguns PvE damage got an increase by plus 30%. Wow. I actually have some pretty decently rolled PvE shotguns that are Slug Shotguns. Now it's time. High Impact Pulse Rifles are underused in Crucible. While they have a very fast optimal time to kill, that TTK was very hard to achieve. So we decided to soften that a little. High Impact Pulse Rifle damage per bullet has been increased from 21 to 22. This change 
changes it from six crits to now five crits in one body to kill a guardian in pvp at most resilience values still gonna be interested in whether or not that's gonna be utilized if that is the case though redrick's meta incoming huh in analytics we see bows are underused in challenging content and locally we observe that it feels terrible when a bow leaves a red bar enemy at low health bow pve damage versus miners plus 10 percent well, all right that that's pretty good i like these changes we'll see how big of a difference they make future archetype updates though we've been evaluating feedback in our analytics data and while we're not done yet we wanted to touch on three community pain points our current goal is to touch on these in season 12 but we'll be sure to let you know if plans change First up, sniper rifles. Community feedback has been that Revoker and Beloved dominate. And looking at analytics, they account for 86% of sniper rifle usage in the Crucible. And if we include other low zoom sniper rifles, the number gets even higher. We specifically looked at how zoom translates into ease of use for sniper rifles. We're investigating changes that make choosing a sniper rifle zoom more of an interesting choice. Hand cannons. We're evaluating the hand cannon subfamilies. As an example, we're breaking out a aggressive hand cannons to let us tune their range independently of the others. Oh boy, nothing on 140s though. Bungie, Bungie, don't forget 140s. Adaptive auto rifles. Auto rifles in general are highly represented in Crucible, but generally feel balanced. Adaptive auto rifles are a little higher, so we're looking at them. We're not rolling back the season 10 buff, but we're adjusting the tuning a little to give other auto rifle subfamilies a chance to shine. AKA, we're gonna be buffing the piss out of half Dan. Just say that, Bungie. You're buffing the piss out of the Dan. Well, guys, those are your future sandbox changes listed for season 11. And again, those future archetype updates for sniper rifles, hand cannons, and adaptive autos, that will not be until season 12, unless I guess something jumps out and Bungie wants to attack it now. Outside of that, I guess I was kind of hoping for more to be included here, but this is a good start. I do think in season 12, though, Bungie's either going to go in and up the zoom on all of our sniper rifles, or outright just get rid of low zoom on all of our sniper rifles. Like, give it a 0.5 increase. Wait, am I saying that right? 0 0.5? 0 0.05? They're going to make some kind of change, though, and I think it's going to happen, so enjoy your sniper rifles while you can. Now, before I let you go, items that are leaving at the end of the season. Access to Seraph Bunkers. Oh, no. War Mind Bits. Fourth Horseman Exotic Quest. The Lie Quest. Legendary Lost Sectors. The War Mind Seasonal Artifact. I will say, guys, yeah, go ahead and jump on those quests right now. Fourth Horseman and the Lie. I'm not sure how those weapons will be included in the future, but if it's like it was previously, Bungie normally waits at least a season or two, right? Before actually including those weapons again. So go ahead and jump on it now if you can. Well, fellas, that is your twa of the day. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Are these the changes you want to see? If you haven't checked out a review for Felwinner's Lie, in the description is a link to that. Feel free to go and check it out, guys. We break that weapon down in both PvE and PvP, and you can see whether or not it's worth your time going after. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.